So I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the IAU webinar uh, on uh, integrating the SDGs in higher education. The webinar forms part of a webinar series that the IAU initiated in the um, in the period of uh, marked by COVID-19 and we started um, in the spring and the webinar series is entitled The Future of Higher Education, Short, Medium and Long Term. As you know um, and as you may know and otherwise will discover, the International Association of Universities has been involved in uh, developing initiatives around sustainable development uh, since the early 90s and um, since the uh, launch of the Brundtland report uh, that actually called many governments and all stakeholders around the world to uh, uh, pay more attention to the issues that are of common uh, importance around the world and thus work more towards a more sustainable future. And since uh, the early 90s, we've developed all kinds of activities uh, also relating to work that Alexander Leicht will have the opportunity to explain, uh, i.e. the work of UNESCO in fostering, in particular, education for sustainable development. So the IAU webinar series on the future of higher education uh, allows us to discuss many very important issues that are actually uh, on the agenda of higher education institutions around the world. And we focused in particular, for instance, on the changing uh, dynamics of internationalization, especially also in times of COVID-19. We looked at the impact of COVID-19 on higher education at large. We had a webinar uh, focusing specifically on the future of values upon which to build better higher education and zoomed in on academic freedom issues. We have looked at strategy development in higher education and how these strategies could and should involve um, sustainable development dynamics more and many uh, other uh, uh, issues that are actually challenges but also opportunities for universities today. Today we are very honored and pleased to discuss uh, different ways of integrating the SDGs in higher education. And you will see no one size fits all. There are many different ways of doing it and there are many different ways of engaging with the sustainable development goals. And we thank uh, the three speakers for having accepted our invitation to speak and show what they actually do from many different perspectives. Alexander Leicht is the chief of section at the Education for Sustainable Development um, division at uh, UNESCO, and he will explain how UNESCO has worked on different aspects of sustainable development, but also uh, how it has fostered a lot of uh, better attention of all people involved in education for sustainable development from early stages um, to uh, lifelong. And he's been involved with these projects a long time as well. And so it's a great honor to have been able to also work as an international association with UNESCO on certain aspects of the work of UNESCO there. Shakuntala Lashkar is a senior professor at Assam Don Bosco University in India. Welcome to our panel. Uh, very pleased uh, to have you speak on something that we even had to look up more specifically, and it is um, the dynamics around uh, SDG 6 in particular, 7 in particular, uh, energy, and uh, how um, the, um, um, the, the, there is a, a new terminology for us, and that is called hydrel. So hydro, how, how hydro energy transforms into electricity, and you, this is to zoom in, in on a very particular component or a contribution of a university to research on how to improve um, uh, energy use for the future of our planet. Your cluster work is linked to SDG 13 also, climate action 15 as well, uh, life on Earth. And so you will show also how the different um, SDGs are not to be seen in silo, but certainly also connect and will allow to go uh, more in depth into a multidisciplinary approach and, and um, dynamics that are so important for all of us to, um, to use in order to better 
face the challenges that we face. And last but not least, and this is not the order in which every uh, speaker will be speaking, but still uh, Chuck Hopkins, uh, Charles Hopkins from York University. Um, you hold a um, UNESCO chair on reorienting education towards sustainable development. And that is work that we have admired long term as well, uh, because you have really been able to shake and move higher education around the world to address the issues that are um, on the table and need to be looked at in very proactive ways. And you will uh, help us look into those and share uh, a lot of the wisdom that you have gathered over time and can share with with the people here. You're also, uh, both of you, Chuck and um, Jacques Kuntala, both from York University and Assam Don Bosco, two universities heavily uh, and very uh, positively involved in the IAU Global Cluster on Higher Education and Research for Sustainable Development. And that is uh, of importance to us as well as you generate the kind of dynamics that allow to link the different parts of the world on issues that are so important for the future of all. So you all three make the case for the importance of research as well, uh, the importance of higher education uh, to, to be seen as one of the key stakeholders uh, in um, the whole process to engage with Agenda 2030 and to make sure that the goals have any chance to be met by 2030 or later. And that will also be very important to look at. So I, no one size fits all, that is for sure. So you will show that diversity always are essential. They're complementary uh, in many different ways. And what is important is to share about it and to also see how we can engage in a conversation with uh, the many participants from around the world and to see how they relate to the different presentations that you will make. I'm now very pleased to give the floor to Isabel Toman, with whom uh, I have the pleasure to work here at the IAU in Paris and who heads uh, much of the work that we do in the context of the IAU Global Cluster on higher education and research for sustainable development. So Isabel, the floor is yours and I will get back to you later. Before I do so, uh, however, just one uh, second still, uh, please do put all your questions in the chat. We will look at the questions and we will try to do our best to respond to uh, all those we can. Uh, you, you know as well that the speakers each have 10 to 15 minutes to speak and then there is time for a constructive discussion towards the end. Rest assured that we will also uh, note all the questions down and share them with the speakers if there are questions that we could not uh, address uh, during uh, the conversation we will have at the end of uh, the presentations. So each of the speakers will have 10 to 15 minutes to present their points to uh, the webinar and then we will dig deeper in, the co in a conversation uh, also uh, looking at the questions that you have shared. So thank you very much. The floor is yours, uh, Isabel. Thank you. Also, a warm welcome from me, from the INU in Paris. I'm very pleased that we have such a good uh, round of speakers here, and I think we will have a really interesting discussion. Um, from my side, as I'm working as Program Officer for Higher Education and Sustainable Development, HESD, at IAU, I would just like to give a brief introduction of what we are doing at IAU with this topic. So, sustainable development is one of IAU's key strategic priorities, and our activities regarding that include a global portal where we showcase and also demonstrate what universities are doing. We are conducting surveys on higher education and sustainability at universities globally and we also have several publications and events that we are working with with our member universities and with the IAU Global Cluster. Um, Hilla just has already been mentioning we have two cluster representatives here today. We have York University in Toronto and we have a San Don Bosco University in India. So here you see a nice world map of how we distributed the SDGs over all continents. And um, we did launch this cluster at IAU in 2018 already with the aim to just connect all the activities that are already out there. We have each institution leading one of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and then we, they work with their respective partner universities in satellite clusters, in so-called subclusters. Um, 
So the goal for all of these universities involved in the cluster, it's around 80 in total, is to really bring sustainable development in higher education and research forward and to promote the role of universities for Agenda 2030. And within this cluster, we are developing approaches for collaboration, for joint research projects, but also really share the experiences of how to work with the SDGs on an institutional level in their strategic plan, in their leadership, but also for teaching how to put the SDGs in a curricula or in campus operation or in projects that universities do with their local communities. So within this cluster, we really have two concrete objectives, which is to work as a research and networking hub for universities that are working with the SDGs, but also for those that are new to this approach of, of working with sustainability in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then, of course, we also serve a bit as this global voice for higher education and sustainable development at the UN level, at the government level, really stressing that higher education and universities do play a role. They do contribute to sustainable development and to society. So this is just a very brief introduction to the work we are doing. And I think you will see later, and we can also put that in the chat, the links to the IAU Global Cluster. You can see on this map that um, we have several universities involved there. Um, it's a bit small, but we make sure to send you the link as well later on. And for any questions on that, please do not hesitate to come back to us in the end. Just without any further ado, um, I want to give the floor to our great speakers. And we will start with Alexander Leich, the Chief of, Sec for the, of the Education Section at UNESCO. So Alexander, please. Go ahead. This was just a brief introduction from us, and we're happy to hear your part. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Isabel. Thank you very much, Elige. Uh, thanks for inviting me, and thanks for giving UNESCO the floor. I start with uh, just briefly um, mentioning once more um, how we appreciate the idea of setting up this cluster and to bringing universities together, really using the SDGs as a, as a matrix. This is really, I think, a very, very important step to making the work at the higher education level for sustainable development for the SDGs uh, more strategic and more, more systematic. Well, what I will do <clears throat> in the minutes I, I have is just to briefly present um, this new framework that we have for education for sustainable development that our member states um, uh, through a you know, very deep consultation process developed, uh, our member states governments, but also then many other uh, stakeholders, non-governmental stakeholders, uh, practitioners, uh, teachers networks, uh, higher education uh, networks. This uh, new framework, we call it ESD for 2030, was, ado was adopted by our member states uh, last autumn. Uh, and we are now in the process of rolling it out a little bit, of course, uh, hindered uh, by the by the pandemic situation. Um, so instead of having a big launch conference uh, in the summer of this year, in, in June this year, we will have a big conference next year. And we are now, uh, uh, in a way, soft launching this new framework uh, due to the current situation. So basically, uh, I start really with maybe uh, just saying a few words about our general approach to education for sustainable development. And Isabel, I think that's the next slide, if you could show that. Um, and that uh, uh, would be that, of course, education for sustainable development, uh, the next one, actually. Um, uh, education for sustainable development uh, really for us uh, means uh, integrating knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes uh, into education, those knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes that really empower everyone to contribute to sustainable development that concerns all levels of the education system. And it also concerns uh, all types of education, formal uh, education, non-formal education, uh, informal learning. We very much emphasize um, the three learning dimensions of cognitive, social, emotional, and behavioral. And we always uh, emphasize, uh, you can see that a little bit, it's, it's not easy to read, but a little bit reflected here on, the, uh, uh, on, this, uh, on this image. We emphasize that uh, uh, the cognitive uh, learning dimension is, of course, very important to get the basic facts about sustainable development and the sustainable development challenges, but the ultimate uh, goal of this type of education is really action in the real world behavior change uh, at the at the various uh, at the various levels. 
This is also why in this new framework, uh, and you can also see this here reflected uh, in this maybe not so easy to read uh, uh, slide, is that we very much uh, emphasize the big transformation that needs to happen if we want to achieve the sustainable development goals and that um, and that education needs to uh, contribute uh, to. It's transformation um, at two different levels. One level is really the individual level. How can I acquire the relevant skills and also the right kind of motivation to, um, at the individual level, uh, change my life towards sustainable development, to put it uh, in a simple way uh, like that. But uh, it's very important to emphasize that we cannot step uh, and stay at the individual level. We also no need to look at the big societal transformation that is uh, necessary. And that's probably uh, the more important level even than the purely individual level. So what we emphasize very much are also citizenship skills for sustainability. What do I need as an individual to become engaged with the wider societal political process uh, where the big decisions for sustainable development uh, uh, are made and that uh, brings together very much um, also citizenship education um, the skills that citizenship education uh, provides and education for a sustainable uh, development so that's the first uh, point really i wanted to emphasize the second point uh, with this new framework that uh, that we are that we are making is really education for sustainable development and isabel that's the next slide is relevant um, for the achievement all of all the 17 um, uh, sdgs you may see on our website uh, we have a, um, a relatively popular document that spells out uh, learning objectives for each of the 17 SDGs and cross-cutting uh, competencies. We've tried to summarize this one, uh, you know, with this one 60-page uh, document here on this one slide. That's also not very easy to read, but I think you get the basic idea um, that education for sustainable development really leads to specific um, uh, achievements, let's say, for each of the 17 uh, SDGs. Uh, again, uh, as reflected here at the center of the slide, um, uh, along the three learning dimensions of cognitive, social, emotional, and um, and uh, uh, behavioral. So education for sustainable development for all the 17 SDGs. That's the second uh, important point that our member states and all other stakeholders have agreed for this new framework or this new uh, this this new um, uh, strategy. Um, we also think that um, that education for sustainable development is very well placed to talk about the different um, and le facilitate learning about the different interlinkages between the the different SDGs. And uh, uh, I think that is also very as is also very evident and as, as is widely discussed. There are also certain um, tensions or possible trade-offs between the different SDGs about economic development on the one hand. Uh, conservation on the on the other hand, for example. So there's a lot of negotiation, a lot of learning at, at the whole society level necessary to uh, implement, achieve uh, all the 17 SDGs uh, equally. And we believe that the specific learning approach that Education for Sustainable Development provides uh, helps us to deal with these interlinkages and this also with these possible uh, trade-offs and, 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 and tensions. Now, when it comes to the implementation of this new, uh, of this, if we move away sort of more from the concept, but move towards the implementation, on the next slide, uh, you will see that we have identified uh, five action areas to build on the previous um, uh, framework or program we, we had uh, that, we, that we used to call the Global Action Program. Uh, and, uh, and under which we also worked with IEU, uh, of course, in, in higher education. So we have maintained, further developed, but largely maintained these five priority action areas that have been identified as the key areas where we uh, need to see change in order to make education uh, more sustainable or bring education overall in line with education for sustainable development. The first one is to creating the right kind of policy environment for this type of education that we want to uh, promote, both in the area of the education policies, but then also with regard to the policies that are connected to specific sustainable development sectors, the climate sector, uh, for example. The second um, action area targets uh, education institutions and looks at how can the education institution be transformed into a, 
uh, a space where learning for sustainable development is possible, not only through teaching and learning content, but also through the way the organism, the uh, institution is, is organized. The uh, third area is uh, a self-evident one, building capacities of ed educators, teachers, educators at all levels as learning facilitators for uh, sustainable development. Here also, of course, um, uh, higher education has a crucial role to play as, as, the, uh, as, as the space where, where teachers and future educators are, are educated. Young people, youth, youth groups, especially with regard to non-formal education as the fourth uh, action, uh, action area, with the emphasis to see young people here not, uh, not or not only as a target group, but really as the ones who themselves can, can drive education and can drive, uh, drive learning. And the fifth action area where in a way all five areas come together is at the local level. How can we at the local level through the local level net networks, but also through local government, facilitate um, learning for sustainable development in the in the community uh, level. So this is basically the matrix through which we have been and will be developing activities together with all our partners, such as such as uh, IAU, such as different universities, uh, but also then of course partners in areas beyond higher education, because as I have emphasized. The, the work uh, concerns really all levels and all types uh, of the uh, all levels of the education system and all types uh, of education from UNESCO just uh, to to finish um, uh, my short overview because I see also my time is coming to an end we will emphasize very much providing support at the at the country level um, and uh, we will try to or we are trying to identify a number of uh, of countries who, where there's a particular also political will and where there's a particular threshold to uh, generate uh, education for sustainable development activities under this new framework. And we will try to provide uh, support to those countries in order to achieve the progress there. We will also set up, or we are setting up, building on the previous work, uh, a network of stakeholders at the globe, at the regional and the global levels, in order to facilitate uh, uh, exchange of good uh, good uh, practices. Um, we will, or we are doing research in order to track issues and trends to make sure that the implementation is evidence uh, informed. Um, we are also trying to engage, of course, in resource mobilization because this is uh, always has been an, an still under resourced area of work. And then part of our responsibility is also to track the progress globally in line with UNESCO's role as, um, as the official sort of reporting agency, the custodian agency for the global indicator for target 4.7 of the sustainable development goal for the target that includes uh, ESD. Um, I stop here. Uh, that was my very, uh, hopefully not too rushed overview um, of our new framework, uh, sort of the, the, the key ideas behind it, but then also the areas where we are planning to, to implement it. And I'm sure we can come back to, to some of the points later in the questions. Thanks a lot, Ray. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Alexander, for this presentation, this overview of what UNESCO is doing and especially stressing the citizen side and this need for transformation and the interplay between and interlinkages between the SDGs. I think also in a university context, we will get back to this topic and um, get back also to the links you sent here. We can also see uh, more information on the UNESCO part. Um, and also for our participants that have been asking, we will be sending the slides and the recording later on. So don't worry if you don't manage to write them down now. Um, they will be made available later on the IAU page. So now I would like to give the floor to Charles Hopkins, the UNESCO Chair in Reorientating the Education, Reorienting Towards Sustainability, sorry, from York University in Toronto. Um, Charles, are you able to switch on your video or do we have you join by sound? Yeah. Unfortunately, we have a terrible internet connection here, so it'll have to uh, have to just be sound alone. Um, okay, we hear you just so fine, okay. so um, that is good. good. Then thank you, and the floor is yours. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, and thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to begin with just a couple of opening remarks. Uh, one about the context of this webinar. You know the. 
I'm thinking back, the history of UNESCO teaming up with IAU regarding the role of higher education in uh, the quest for a sustainable future really goes back a long time. Uh, I re recalled I was present at global meetings organized by IAU and UNESCO with uh, university leaders <clears throat> as far back as 1991 in, in Halifax. And then later in parallel sessions at the Earth Summit in Rio we met, and later again in Quebec City. All seeking and trying to outline the roles for higher education. Uh, today, of course, the rationale for the engagement of higher education goes beyond the original research and training of science professionals that uh, the UN requested in Agenda 21. Uh, but it, it's realizing the potential of reaching a much broader audience and actually preparing tomorrow's leaders. We know that a very small percentage of, uh, of people actually get to go to higher education, about 8%, but that 8% will become 80% of the leaders and shapers of society of tomorrow. So the, this leveraging role of higher education and the relevance of ESD, is, as Alexander's slide pointed out, is not just recognized by UNESCO, uh, but by the UN as a whole, and not just limited to SDG 4, but and, uh, to quote the UN saying, as a key enabler of all of the SDGs. I think even beyond that, philosophically speaking, uh, speaking with, position ESD as a new purpose of education. You know, we, it needs to be included in the essential discussions that are emerging. COVID restructuring of uh, basic education and education at all levels, fundamental questioning of why are we educating people and so on. So, uh, just as opening marks to to think of this in context so slide please yeah thanks uh one of the was creating subclusters as for resource building, uh, research, and, and networking hubs. So what I'd like to do is to look at one of the particular clusters, and that's subcluster four. Our, our members are Charles University in the Czech Republic, the International Islamic University in Malaysia, Lafana University in Germany, Rhodes University in South Africa, and the University of Peace in Costa Rica, as well as our university, York University in Canada. The thing is that they are all well established, they're well connected globally, and the subcluster itself benefits from the networks that are within each of the six members. The overarching plan is to target higher education senior leadership, the executive man uh, management, the senior decision makers who have the resources and the responsibility to act. So our work is focusing then on ESD at the, at the core of a quality education and uh, looking into a whole institution approach towards sustainability. So the, this subcluster four is collaborating in activities such as creating executive material on the history and the evolution as it emerges of the whole institution approach in higher ed, sharing best practices, experiences, and proven benefit. You can see that it's also about advising universities and colleges on change strategies. It's about addressing sustainability in student and faculty mobility in higher ed. This is a, an emerging one, very important revising the, our thoughts of mobility for both students and faculty, rethinking how to enhance the feeling of global citizenship, being in solidarity with the other, okay? emotional experiences, connectedness, all of this which we have been taking part in in, in uh, mobility and internationalizing higher education, but now considering it in the context of the ecological footprint of this, uh, the pandemic, the cost, the effort, 
So we need to rethink all of this aspect. And so uh, the cluster will uh, be hosting a major virtual conference in, uh, in January around World Education Day. So you can watch for that. So, uh, but I would like to point out that within each of these subclusters, uh, there's no additional resources. So uh, each of our activities has to be reframed and repurposing existing resources and efforts. So I thank everybody who, all of the institutions who have accepted uh, this responsibility. The second slide, please. So let's uh, look at sort of an example of how one university is developing their whole institution approach is uh, in, in a context of it almost being a research approach. At York specifically, there's a, a long history of addressing the elements of sustainability dating back to York being one of the original signatories of the Halifax Declaration, as I mentioned in 1991. They, they have a long history of looking into diversity, social justice, environmental consciousness, atmospheric research linked to climate change. Uh, their MBAs uh, uh, engaged with sustainability, public health, and so on. Uh, York University is already recognized as an international leader in the SDGs uh, around relevant research, teaching, partnerships, and, and certainly campus practices. Now, all building on this, York has moved ahead with an academic plan from 2020 uh, 20 to 2025. So this new academic plan with advancing the sustainable development goals that encapsulates the, the whole initiative, as you can see from the diagram with the symbol of the SDGs surrounding everything. This blueprint for action with the six priority areas elevates York's University's action to contribute to the UN, to the, uh, to the SDGs. But it, it uh, as you can see, the issues are 21st century learning, knowledge for the future, beyond access to higher education to actual success, advancing global engagement, partnering, and living well together. It means addressing a whole institution approach towards sustainability, and, and this encapsulates then that not only teaching and research and community service, but the operations, purchasing, uh, food, transportation, internationalization as schemes, investments, and so on. And to do this requires dialogue and engagement on all faculty and staff. So this means building on a comprehensive sustainability strategy that we already had in 2017 and to come is a revised internationalization and global outreach strategy with SDGs as an anchor. Now I must say, ranking and the Times Higher Education and so on have influenced and have helped. And what it is doing now is building a dialogue regarding the real criteria beyond that what is listed in Times Higher Education that we should focus on to better serve our students in the community now and later throughout their entire lives. Slide three, please. So this, this next slide is again a specific micro look at a crucial role that UNESCO plays in embedding sustainability in higher education. That is the establishment of the UNITWIN UNESCO chairs. Um, Alexander's uh, presentation is, is mentions about contributing to strengthening ESD through research, both quantitative and, and qualitative research from global networks. And uh, highlight one of these aspects and that's working with the UNESCO chairs. These uh, UNESCO chairs, as you can see, were, the concept was established in 1992 with uh, originally 700 institutions from 116 countries uh, that uh, it has grown to, to be today. It, it uh, promotes north-south, south-south and so on collaboration the chairs are sort of think tanks and bridge builders between the academic world, civil society, and local communities 
uh, mainly working through research and now focusing more on policy making. The idea is to collaborate and uh, to address the pressing challenges uh, uh, that are of concerns with the UN and, uh, and UNESCO and to contribute to the development of their societies. So it, overall, it really en uh, enhances the, the capacity of higher education as a contributor. If you look at the picture inside, this is a, a meeting of the German UNESCO chairs in Wuppertal um, uh, earlier this year, where they were creating a German collaborative plan, uh, integrating the work of all of the, uh, of the chairs, spanning social sciences, environmental sciences, and the, the different acts of, in, in a collaborative way. I want to thank uh, UNESCO for the interconnectedness now in the new ESD for 2030 plan of connecting all of the priority areas so that those who become the partners, the ESD net, will be able to work collaboratively across all five priority areas. This is important because you can't just isolate one from the, uh, from the others. Our uh, UNESCO chair, when looking at this idea of, of research and contributing to policy, uh, 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 the other part of, our, uh, of, of the slide talks about two research networks that have been reformed and are poised, ready to collaborate on ESD for 2030s is research networks. One of them is uh, uh, the International Network of Teacher Education Institutions, uh, that spans roughly 50 countries, uh, looking at how to embed ESD in teacher education, and the other big network, also spanning roughly 50 countries, is looking into how ESD could help to improve the education of the least well-served uh, people in the world by their education systems, and that is the world's indigenous. So in closing, um, the, the idea of, uh, of collaboration, working together between the IIEU clusters, the unit twin programs and so on, and building on research and training to reach all who attend through higher education, uh, not only through the teaching, but also through what our institutions themselves model. model. We're, we're adding policy advice, actively pursuing a global voice for higher education. The research, the now looking at sustainability science as a collection of natural and social sciences and so on uh, in a participatory way to, to develop policy. And then lastly, I'd like to comment that SDG 17 is about creating and engaging partnerships. The, the partnership of UNESCO, IAU, and the thousands of higher education institutions, their faculty and professional staff, have much to offer the SDGs and the 2030 agenda. Let's get their voice when national governments and local and regional governments are developing their implementation strategies. Let's be at the table. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles, for this presentation and also presenting the work that the SDG4 cluster is doing and uh, spreading a bit of light on this big UNESCO unit twin network. And um, I think we all very much agree to the importance of partnerships and seeing all these international um, participants joining today shows the willingness to to work together across borders and i think that's that's really um what we need and um now last but not least i would like to give the floor to our third speaker which is from University in India. Um, and she will zoom in on the work of her university for the SDGs, particularly SDG 7. Mr. Quintana, the floor is yours. I will mute myself now to avoid the echo. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Warm greetings from Assam Don Bosco University. 
I am happy to present here some aspects of what we in Assam Don Bosco University are doing to make SDG goals visible to our faculty and students. First of all, the SDG 3 is about the health and well-being. Assam Don Bosco University is committed to supporting communities belonging to around 145 villages, mostly tribal, in the vicinity of a campus in Tapesia, Sonapur, towards sustainable development. We operate a mobile dispensary in the form of a van stuffed with qualified medical health care workers and medical social work practitioners they provide primary medical care to those living in underserved areas and have limited or no accessibility to health care facilities. Social workers associated with the university reach out to the people involving local communities and organizing awareness for health care. Apart from providing free medical consultancy, we make available basic medicines at minimal cost. Then it's about this SDG 4, the quality education. Our university students provide free tutorial classes for the school students of the neighboring villages. With the guidance of our faculty, they also conduct sessions on life skills, personality development, and career guidance to address the educational needs of the adults and children in the neighboring villages. These programs are organized in each of our three campuses and reaches out to more than 100 children in each of the campuses. In the Engineering College campus, the program is called Swiss Tyan, which is committed uh, commitment to eradicate inequalities in society through education. The Master of Business uh, Administration students conduct a similar program called Prajwal, Lighting Lives to Education. SDC 5, which is about gender equality. Our university launched an initiative in adult education for village women with the strategy Educate to Empower. The initiative in encompasses a six-month certificate program in basic English uh, reading and writing and workshops on career guidance, enabling them to guide their children. Child development and parenting, nutrition and balanced diet, physical health, communicable and non-communicable diseases, mental health and human rights. Uh, then about the SDG 6, this is about clean water and sanitation. Assam Don Bosco University had conducted a participatory rural appraisal in 12 villages. In the, this is SDG 6 uh, slide for clean water and sanitation. Um, Sorry, would, was this this slide or which one would you like me to put? It's about SDG 6. This one. Uh, a participated real appraisal in 12 villages in the vicinity of its campus. Based on this, the Center of Excellence in Nanotechnology at our university developed low cost solar powered water purifiers. They utilize green technology for filtration and purification of ground and surface water. The filtration unit includes sand and gravel for the removal of particulate matter. The adsorption unit has activated charcoal and nano absorbing material for ab absorbing metal ions. Apart from allocating a solar powered water purifier to each of the 12 villages, interested, educated and unemployed village youth have been trained to maintain these purifiers in their villages. The training also had the aim of enhancing the entrepreneurial capability of the village youth. European U Union Ambassador to India, Thomas 
Kozlowski, in his visit to the university, inaugurated this project. He congratulated the university for its role in making pure drinking water available to the poor. Uh, the next one is the, about the SDG 10, which is reduced inequality. Uh, Swabalamban or self-help is a project of the university for training educated up to 10 standard unemployed youth in technical job oriented skills for employment opportunities in electrical and electronics, information technology hardware, installation and maintenance of power backup systems, and computer application training. Till the 800 young people have been trained and certified in such practical job-oriented technical training. This program has been acknowledged by the International Association of University uh, as a best practice in a survey among 120 educational institutions worldwide in sustainable development goal 10 of reduced inequalities. Uh, then next one is about SDC 13, so climate action. Yes, um, just agroforestry, uh, forestry and conservation of biodiversity. For the conservation of healthy ecosystems, the university has embarked on plantation drives spread over 190 acres of its campus at Tapesia. The variegated cropping of tea, coconut, rubber, cocoa, cashew nut, agar, ginger, and turmeric has been have been established as livelihood projects, as well as demonstration farms and seed gardens. The university also launched a greening initiative, which involves planting and custodianship of tree samplings by individual students who will pass on the nurturing of the trees to the next batch of students prior to leaving the university. Water conservation and supply management, uh, the university has invested enormous resources to harvest rainwater at a macro level. It has created a major reservoir spread over 10 acres and five minor reservoirs, each of one acre or more in area by tapping small streams in the campus. Drinking water is obtained from five deep bore wells. Uh, the next slide is on this life on land. Uh, the, the campus has a natural forest cover and uh, is the refuse of varied endemic species of wildlife. The university land is demarcated by boundary pillars without fences or barriers to allow the unhindered movement of animals and their access to water sources and foliage. Uh, this is about the SDG 17, which is partnership for goals. The university has a large network of 22 collaborative activities in research, 61 linkages with institutions, uh, industries for internship, on-the-job training, project work, and sharing of research facilities. It also has 38 MOUs with important national and international institutions and universities, and linkages with industries and corporate for academic activities, research, and career opportunities for students. So now I shall be switching on to ADVU and SDG 7 and about the research in energy efficiency. The, the targets for SDG 7 includes access to affordable and reliable energy, increased use of renewable energy, improving energy efficiency, clean energy research, etc. So Sam Don Moscow University is the cluster lead for SDG 7. University has installed 320 kilowatt grid connected solar photovoltaic power system 
by using the free rooftop spaces. This has reduced the energy cost by 16 to 20 percent. The installation of a facility for generating micro hydroelectric power up to 15 kilowatt is underway. The university is focusing on energy efficiency. Uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Gov Government of India, has been mandated to help 100 existing buildings achieve net zero energy building status. That is a building with energy performance index less than 15 kilowatt hour per meter square per year. EDBU is one of the 100 buildings to be assessed by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. The assessment has been completed and we will soon get a roadmap to achieve a near zero energy building. The university is undertaking research in the generation of affordable energy from new and renewable sources in a cost effective manner targeted for use in rural areas of the country. Some of the selected ongoing research areas in the field of energy uh, are uh, this is about the generation from bio waste. This is one successful model of energy generation, uh, which is called cow dung battery. And it has got great relevance in rural setup, considering the low cost. When series connected discharge batteries are placed in a basin containing some cow dung and salt water and exposed to sunlight, the positive and negative charges produced in the solution are collected in the series connected batteries to produce a current does the batteries get recharged so the efficiency can be enhanced by adding sulfuric acid in it uh, there is another uh, research uh, just i will mention this is about the development of a novel algorithm to increase the performance of photovoltaic array in partial shading condition this project presents a technique to configure the modules in the PV array to enhance the generated power from the array under partial shading condition. The theoretical results obtained using simulation studies demonstrate a significant power improvement in the proposed configuration with respect to the TCT configuration. Then I just mentioned that there's a uh, the research in the undergraduate level about the development of a solar powered steam turbine generator, uh, which is a renewable energy technology having the ability to provide electricity. The solar powered steam turbine generator was designed and built based on collecting solar energy using a fringe lens so, uh, so that the heat. Uh, is created in the fluid in a reservoir to high temperature to produce steam, which drives a turbine coupled to the generator. Uh, there is also incorporation of a solar tracker uh, using Arduino, which tracks the maximum light intensity at a, part at a particular point of time. So this is just mentioned about the research going on in the uh, Assam Don Bosco University about energy efficiency. So uh, uh, I'm coming to. Uh, thank you. Yes. If you wrap up, please. It would be great. Thank you. Pardon? C thank could you. we ask you to uh, have some final words and wrap up so we can move on and don't go over time? That would be great. Uh, I'm just coming to the conclusion. Okay, perfect. Uh, the pandemic impact has not been. Yeah. Uh, not been able to dampen the spirit of the university community. Teaching and learning continued through online classes in the last spring semester using different platforms like Google Classroom, Google Meet, Skype, etc. This autumn semester 2020 has also started in the virtual mode. From the experience of the last spring semester, we are looking for greater effectiveness in the teaching learning process. We have adopted service learning as a strategy in the teaching and learning activities in all the university. This provides an opportunity for learners to enhance their understanding of concepts 
and theories in the practical environment. Though apparently similar to uh, volunteerism and internship, it's different from this. It's more focused on enhancing a student's understanding of theoretical knowledge through service experience in community and reflection on that experience. So I come to the end and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of Asan Don Bosco University and what you are doing here about the SDG goals. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Shagmutala, for sharing these very important projects and showing how you can really work with the SDGs in the community. I think it's um, important to see how you can put one SDG into an actual project and help also uh, people in your region and locally and connect that to the teaching at the university. So now I would like to move on to the more interactive and discussion part between our journalists, uh, sorry, our panelists. And I would give the floor again for to Hilic Fanland, our IAU Secretary General, who will moderate this discussion. And thank you again to the participants for the questions in the chat. We will get to them in a minute, but now we will commence the discussion with these questions. Hilic, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Isabel. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Chuck Alexander and Shakuntala for these uh, very interesting uh, presentations. I think uh, in common, um, I see that there is a, a real wish to showcase how um, education, the education sector engages with the SDGs um, and how they actually develop new strategies to build it in the, the, um, the strategy itself of in education institutions. But uh, two overarching questions could be the following ones that I will pose as generic ones to each of you and invite you two minutes, uh, during two minutes to react to. And then I will take some of the questions from the chat box as well. So how do you believe that uh, higher education or education institutions at large can contribute to integrating sustainable development or education for sustainable development strategies in national policies as well because to build it in at the institutional level is one thing uh, but as you said also alexander in the beginning you work uh, with uh, member states and you also help them uh, to to develop the strategies that are required to scale up uh, activities that uh, are being developed by others so it's would be interesting to see um, if we can come back to the uh, national uh, policies and national strategies to uh, actually foster sustainable development. The second broader question would be um, more specific to universities, yet again linking up national strategies with those actors in society that can make the difference. And here, how actually to better equip universities and other higher education institutions with more theoretical and practical tools to actually go to the, um, to the next step and transform the teaching into something that would be uh, more um, uh, adequate to address the challenges we face, into transforming the research landscape, the research agendas uh, of institutions, of countries, and also look at um, how to transform the institutional mindset, something that was also stressed very strongly by Chuck in his presentation, because it is actually at all the different levels that education institutions, and I broad it, broad, broaden the scope here because UNESCO is not working only at higher education level, but at all the levels, but how to actually um, uh, ensure that these institutions are properly equipped to help uh, um, foster the, uh, the transformation and the new mindset required in order to ensure we are uh, going into a more sustainable future. So broad questions, two minutes will never allow you to answer to those uh, in detail, but maybe your reactions and, and let's, uh, let's go backwards and then uh, maybe Shakuntala first. Education contribute to integrate uh, sustainable development strategies in national policies. In fact, uh, government of India is taking uh, much care about uh, introducing 
different programs for um, for the sustainable development. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, this uh, the Swachhata vision. There is a uh, which uh, actually for uh, I mean the 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 cleanliness drive. It's a cleanliness drive, and uh, then uh, and they claim that the government claims that. Uh, then out of the states of uh, the country, uh, the eight country, eight states are already there. Uh, the, their, I mean, SDG index, that's SDG index is more than 65. And uh, there is no state which is below 50. So this is the st statistics they have shown. Uh, the, so therefore, uh, in the national policies, uh, uh, I think it's going on the right direction, and um, uh, so it's I think uh, in the right direction. So we can the the universities have to take care of this uh, the mindsets. We have to work on the mindsets of the common people, and, and that is very really important. Yeah. So. The yeah. common people must be aware of the SDG goals, and that's we have to spread the message of that that is with us. Because unless and until uh, we make the common people aware of these goals, then nothing is going to happen. So that is the feeling I have for this. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Alexander. May I give you the floor to uh, to maybe address one or two broader questions? Mm -hmm. I try to combine it. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much, Iligia. I can, I can, I can try just to, to, to give a, to say a few words about it. So I think the first one is uh, about the national policies. Of course, it's, it's, it's uh, as I also tried to briefly say in my contribution, it's key to have to get the the broader policy framework right in order to advance education for sustainable development. And here, I think the the, the key strategy is really forceful advocacy. Higher education institutions are key members of a society are key for the future of a society as as those who train future leaders or the future workforce more generally of a society so i think there is a certain leverage that uh, higher education institutions university presidents have with regard to national policy makers uh, and um, and i think it is it is it is a lot about really making the case right uh, evidence informed about how important it is for the future of the country say um, to integrate sustainable development at, 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 at all uh, at all levels, so I think there is no there, there is no sort of there's no magic kind of solution uh, to it. So I think uh, for, for me, really, uh, I, I would say advocacy, uh, a really a very very good advocacy strategy, uh, is is key. And of course, the more uh, higher education institutions team up for that, uh, the better it is. And that's why also IAU's work and 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 similar organizations work is so so important. That brings different institutions together. Very briefly on the second question, there's also not uh, the one uh, perfect answer. I think uh, what we find is that there are still that there's still um, uh, not enough well documented examples out there of universities who really implement the whole institution approach at all the different levels, facilities management, education content, education methodology uh, in, an, in an integral uh, way. Uh, of course, we know you have mapped many organizations, many institutions are doing that, um, but there's not enough really systematic uh, mapping that allows organizations to learn, to learn from each other and to use the learning from each other, the good practice exchange as a, as a kind of tool for further, uh, for further development. So that's my very quick, uh, quick response to to that one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck. Would you like to um, to also uh, pick up on one of the questions or both? Yes, I, I think those uh, uh, recommendations uh, are are excellent and right to the point. Uh, regarding the first one, I think. Um, the, the the knowledge that uh, universities have around the social sciences uh, it would be a, an important contribution. You know, of, of politicians, for them to really be on the cutting edge and to bring in, uh, in 
policies that aren't already supported politically in the general public. It's very difficult. So th they need the credibility of the universities, uh, their voice uh, to be there. Also, I think the, the role of the modeling, uh, uh, at a university of 40, 50,000 is like a small town. And, and uh, you can measure uh, the flows and ebbs and uh, there's so much that, that can be done that way. And I think the uh, proving their, their use at uh, the community level, whether it's urban planning or rural studies, et cetera, the realism of being there present at, uh, on planning committees uh, will slowly work their way up into national policies. Regarding the second one, I think the, the, you can't just bring in professional development for university professors. They, you know, they, they are not going to uh, uh, do, who is going to do it. But what we need to do is to engage higher education in discussions and uh, around controversial discussions. One of them being what comes after sustainable development. Sustainable development was simply the best we could do in the mid 1980s. It's very human centered. It, it has a lot of flaws. And I think one of the things we could do is to engage the university world in uh, post sustainable development. And that would really engage, I think, professors and so on, uh, right across the entire spectrum of, of, uh, of higher education. And, and then not only addressing them in the vision, but how would we get there? So the idea of transforming teaching, transforming what is the research that we need, uh, and what is the institutional mindset? So I think that is, it's just kind of a, a far out uh, thought, but something to uh, to throw out there. Thanks. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, in the in the chat, there was um, a question by Miandi uh, asking how international organizations can help enhance partnerships and networking between member countries to advance. Uh, internationalization of universities um, at, at the level of a nation. Um, I would like to expand that question. I think it was probably not only to advance internationalization of universities, but also to advance uh, the focus of universities on sustainable development. And uh, maybe that that is a question that could go to you, Alexander. So how can organizations also help uh, enhance partnerships and networking mm. between countries? Okay, uh, no, sir, thank you very much for the uh, for the question. Of course, um, as UNESCO and, and similar organizations, we have our platforms that we make available for international exchange, be they virtual platforms or in, in times that are different than the, than the current ones, um, also through, uh, through network meetings that we regularly organize in Education for Sustainable Development and where we always have a strong portion of higher edu education institutions, higher, higher education stakeholders um, participating. So of course, there's these very concrete uh, platforms for international exchange, but I want to say maybe uh, something more, uh, more with regard to the strategy to pursue. I think one important um, aspect is that we must make sure, we should make sure that we don't uh, implement sustainability in higher education as a separate uh, track from other processes the, that are going on. From our perspective, of course, UNESCO, uh, with with uh, with the leadership on SDG four on the on the education sustainable development goal, it is very important to pursue education for sustainable development or sustainability in higher education as part of the platforms that are put in place for SDG four. Uh, coordination. I think one of the dangers can really be um, with regard to sustainability when a committed community comes together, uh, works together, which is wonderful, of course, but stays separate from the, say, more mainstream of higher education uh, concerns. So I think with regard to strategizing, that is very important that at the, at the local level, at the university level, at the national level, and then, of course, that would be for our responsibility at the international level, we make sure that there's a full alignment of these different uh, or seemingly different agendas. So that would be my short comment on, on that one, Elie. Thank you.
Now, I think this um, is linked to another question that was asked at some point that was maybe a little bit on something else yet. Um, it was a um, um, it was a question to Chantala, but it was the, your universities ha have cooperated with local communities in several fields, and what was the role of a university? That's maybe a big, big question. The sub question actually relates to this previous uh, discussion. Uh, because the person asking the question said, but this this would require a huge team to put in place, for instance, the whole of institution approach. And the person also um, uh, stated that this probably would involve an enormous amount of money and a very important budget allocation to the very transformation of the institution. Um, and if I may uh, recall some of the debates that we've had in the uh, in the Global Action Program uh, with UNESCO and the different networks working together, there we've always also made the case that it was not always a matter of money. It was a matter of mindset and it was a matter of bringing people on board of the dynamics, the philosophy, the the, the mindset, the spirit of sustainable development, and that that was something that required actually a whole other kind of dynamic than the financial one. Maybe that you could start, Alexander, and then um, Shakuntala and Chuck could also react to that and show how, if, for instance, the dynamic at York University, yes, it involves also a budget allocation because it, it uh, requires um, faculty member time allocation to the project, but maybe you could elaborate on that a little because the question on money comes back uh, very often. Uh, I'll start with, I mean, like as you suggested, I'll start with two or three comments, but I think our uh, the, the, the Shakuntala and Charles who, who speak more really from the university are probably better placed to say something really substantial about that. So I, I just have one thought I want to share. I think it's it's clear that resources are needed and I think it would naive it would be naive to say, you know, we can do all this work through good networking without additional resources. I think that would also not be not be fair uh, to state that. But I think what is what is uh, Equally important, or even more important, is really the political will in the institution. I mean, the few the, the cases that I'm aware of where this whole institution approach has worked well was because, um, uh, of course, there were many stakeholders within the university who were very much sensitized to sustainable development, but there was also a convinced university leadership that uh, provided the kind of uh, management and also like political leadership to take along the whole university community, and of course, that eventually. That also came with increased resources for these for these processes. But even more important, I think, is really the the, the will of the of the leadership to put it put it like that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chuck. Would you like to uh, maybe uh, start on that one, and then Shakuntala Laskar, you could you could uh, continue. Yes, I I totally believe uh, about the mindset and about the leadership, but. Uh, uh, regarding the funding, the traditional way in which uh, universities have been successful is that it is usually started around uh, energy savings, water, man, you know, it, it, it entered into it as eco-efficiency. And that started to produce the funding trend, which could then be reinvested in, into, uh, in, into the teaching and learning. The other big area of, of start is that sustainability has this mindset of it being about the environment. And uh, so uh, a number of the core faculty who were started with individual subjects uh, in environment or, or natural sciences and so on. And, uh, but from there, as the discussion began, we saw that it, this is much broader. This goes into philosophy, you know, worldviews and so on. And and so it, it spread then uh, throughout that. But I think the uh, idea of uh, that also Alexander and others have mentioned is you, you have to move from the dynamic leader who gets associated with what they were able to do at the university. It has to be embedded in policy to survive the change of leadership. So uh, it's quite a long road, but people have to be aware that uh, moving from eco-efficiency and saving money by turning off lights is through uh, to that much broad, broader whole institution approach and then moving into policy. Thanks. 
Thank you. Shakuntala, would you like to uh, pick up on this one? We're conscious of time as well. We only have 10 minutes left for the you know, future starting. So it it just, uh, depends on the power of willingness, I feel. So when there is a uh, will, there is a way. So that we can manage if you have a will to do. So that's what I feel. Okay. Thank you very much. I see that uh, Amin uh, Hakimi, who is the manager of training and career students at Cardan University, is uh, making the case for um, what to do, or is asking the question, what to do in countries where this is not yet the topic that has been picked up by policy makers or others. Maybe that is also um, something that we could address. Uh, just as a Shakuntala, could you please mute so that the echo is... is um, Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we so we that is that is an important issue as well because some uh, claim that uh, sustainable development has now uh, been t picked up by many governments, many countries around the world, but not by all. So how to bring on board those who are not yet on board? That is one of the questions. Um, the other one that was also posed in the um, in the question is um, how to actually uh, provide for the framework that would uh, would allow to go beyond those already convinced. How to bring on board the others and how to maybe um, create the this um, this whole of institution dynamic and bring others on board. Would you have one or two? easier suggestions for universities to pick up the ball. Chuck, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, regarding Amin's question uh, around um, Afghanistan, first of all, I would love to, uh, to link with the, the between some universities just to show the realism uh, that the, uh, sustainability uh, the world that that we want you know uh, it, it's beyond just saving the environment so the idea of uh, of having some other universities enter into this kind of a discussion Sustainability isn't about the 17 identified goals that that uh, the UN could agree upon. I think in Afghanistan, they have to start with the discussions around the world they want, what's preventing them from getting that particular world? What are their immediate issues? What are their needs? And having people start to address it in, in, in a small way. So uh, certainly it would come around water it would come around a uh, livelihood it would come around the realistic things that are there so i i think that that would be a great world uh, one but it it is such an important question that i i would love to have uh, their university linked to other universities in the north in the south etc to ponder the realism of how do, how do we get engaged and how do we engage other disciplines and so on thanks thank you i see you alexander maybe wishing to pick up uh, on this question no no thank you very much i i i, I no i was just thinking i don't have so much uh, so much to add really i had i had i had the similar the similar thought i should i think we shouldn't get uh, too hung up about um, sort of the the specific terms of the global framework. So uh, the specific, uh, this global framework or that global framework, I think it's wonderful to have this government agreements at the global level. And of course it provides uh, a very strong mandate for action on the ground. But when it comes to those who are basically uh, seemingly not doing anything anything yet, I think that was a bit the, the, the background to the, to the question. Uh, you just start with the actual challenges that are, that are there. I think it's completely, um, uh, irrelevant if you call it sustainable development or education for sustainable development or something else you just look at the concrete community or country level challenges that you have and how can you uh, how can you address them and then very quickly i think you are um, uh, at the points that are then at the global level codified in the in the sdgs thanks okay then i saw also on uh, on two slides 
it was a reference that was made to um, the uh, ranking mechanisms. And somebody, uh, I think it was Albert Trump, you linked it as well to the work of the accreditation bodies. Um, would you deem the 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 ranking mechanisms and accreditation bodies, which are actually two complementary uh, modes, um, to to have a specific and very strong role to play to transform the landscape as well? I think Chuck, you made the case that yes, that it was a, a very good incentive for many universities to actually look more in detail into what universities do and how they do it in order to then also inform the questionnaires that were uh, proposed in order for a ranking to come out of it, but that that was not the finality, but that the aim was to actually bring the teams on board and discuss. But so maybe on the accreditation bodies and, and all those mechanisms that are actually uh, out there um, that universities um, listen to, I believe that the question comes a little bit out of that I'm interpreting here, but that uh, accreditation or ranking mechanisms could be uh, triggers to enhance uh, the take up uh, of sustainable sustainable development agendas in universities. So back first, maybe to Shakuntala, you also had a slide on uh, on uh, rankings on, on in your presentation. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Shakuntala? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Okay. Uh, that is, yeah, that's on life on land. We go to ranking. Uh, so, uh, so I think that that encourages you to go forward getting a good ranking it helps to go forward and uh, work constructively and uh, to reach the goals so okay and i think accreditation bodies do you have something to say about accreditation mechanisms that could help support that dynamic accreditation mechanism we also have here like nba that is uh, for our technical colleges. So uh, that I think is, uh, that will set standard in case, say for research or even for education. So uh, so it's, it's required, I think it, it's good to have an accreditation. Okay. Look, would you like to pick up on that as well, maybe? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it, when you look into change management and, and the theory and so on, you, you do need targets. Uh, you, you do need measurements. You, you need to uh, set goals and targets and so on. And uh, But I think what, uh, where the discussion needs to go is what are the targets? And, um, <laughs> you know, what, what really uh, needs to be measured and what are the increments and so on. And But I see the linking of the whole uh, monitoring, evaluation, ranking, et cetera. Uh, I want to see that linked to the new discussions around the futures of education, what constitutes a quality education, uh, that whole discussion, uh, the purpose of, of higher education being revisited and so on. Uh, so I think that these two need to be coupled so that uh, we don't just come up with uh, uh, rankings that suit either wealthy uh, universities uh, or universities that have access to, uh, to huge amounts of government funding um, or endowments. Uh, you know, how, so how do we put all of this uh, in some sort of perspective? So I see that we do need the rankings as part of change theory. But uh, let's uh, have really in-depth discussions about what, uh, what constitute the rankings, how do we implement them, how do we report them, and what do universities and countries do with them, you know, so right. that it, it's not, this isn't a shame game or a bragging road. Thanks. 
very interesting. And Alexander, would you like to add something to this maybe? Yeah, I think that the rankings can be a, a sort of a, a, a useful incentive as an intermediate uh, step. Uh, of course, you know whatever whatever helps to uh, to incentivize sort of university action, uh, I think is 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 welcome for for this type of for this type of agenda. Uh, we just have, and, and and Charles was alluding to that. We just then have the danger again that we are narrowing the agenda to what is within what is what is within the ring ranking. So uh, that's why I would see it as not an ultimate goal uh, uh, to to set up a sustainability ranking, but a kind of you know step in the right direction. Okay. Thank you very much. Then there are very interesting questions now coming up. Uh, also, how does the current uh, situation also with nationalism coming up and uh, closing down of countries uh, in context of, uh, of COVID-19 or even COVID-19 in itself, uh, putting a lot of stress uh, on higher education to, to do so many other things. How can we prevent that sustainable development or move uh, uh, to the background again, uh, where there is so much uh, already done to advance it. On the contrary, do you see that there would be um, there is a danger there, and how to ensure that sustainable development is the first um, priority back on the agenda as soon as uh, as rebuilding um, is is uh, is is being considered, um, and then. Um, Another question that I see here, so accreditation it comes up again, and so that was the other part, uh, ranking is one, but accreditation is a whole full-fledged mechanism that allows to also check um, um, and, and balance um, the quality paradigm in, in higher education, so very important to, to look at those dynamics. But maybe um, the, the question, how in in the current context of COVID-19 and everything that, that universities have to face and the many tasks and challenges that they are to respond to, is sustainable development uh, safeguarded and how, how to ensure um, that with IAU, with UNESCO, with your good work in the UNESCO chairs and in the cluster, uh, how to ensure that others will see sustainable development as essential to uh, keep high on the agenda uh, now and into the future. So maybe back to any of you who would like to pick up the ball. <laughs> and then I will have to wrap up. Any other questions will come up later. Shakuntala, would you like to say something or Chuck? To say about the carbon footprint. The carbon mm -hmm. footprint, uh, it's now improving because of this. So I think it will be indirectly helping to reach the goal. So uh, you, you understand the carbon, carbon print, carbon footprint that is uh, attached to every individual that we can calculate out. So that depends on how much you travel, how much you, I mean, produce some polluted gas. So all these things are now reduced because of uh, COVID. So I think that way we are actually Really going towards the our goals of the clean, I mean planet. I, but I will and challenge uh, you on that one, <laughs> Shakuntala, if I may, uh, because on, on the other hand, we also need to uh, need to keep the communication channels open. The very good internationalization opportunities for countries to not um, move inwards, but but stay open to others. And the travel is still part and parcel of uh, of the the very dynamics of linking up our initiatives from India to Canada to France and to uh, any part of the world. So that that's also important. So the hope of the IAU is also that the carbon discourse is not. Uh, impacting uh, negatively on future opportunity for partnering up uh, and also to ensure uh, some good dynamics in internationalization that would go beyond internationalization at home, but certainly also bring people together to bring them out of their comfort zone, really go uh, towards the others, um, network, uh, have the opportunity to learn about uh, other opportunities, link up um, it, it, research systems, science systems, um, intellectual systems by simply sitting together and have the opportunity to uh, 
to understand the other better by, by connecting. That's also one of the key uh, areas of uh, action of UNESCO. You bring people together from all around the world and it's essential to have these conversations online, but certainly also from time to time to have the opportunity to bring people to, together physically to, uh, to get to know each other and then embark on, on further uh, dynamics. Would any of you wish to, to uh, react to this very quickly? And then I will wrap up. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pipe in. I think the idea of looking at the pandemic as a sustainability issue because of the how it has affected the general population, the economy, the environment, and, and so on, it really is a sustainability issue. And so as, as we seek the next normal, you know, as the, the next stage, if we have sustainability as a basic principle on what we build back, and what we change and so on as an underlying fundamental question uh, that we uh, that is there i think this is an opportunity for us to uh, to really address it and the role of higher education in keeping that in in, in uh, uh, both as a philosophical uh, context as well as the practical how do we deliver fresh water etc thanks thank you alexander no, just uh, just to add that uh, the, the the pandemic has has shown us really how important sustainable development is in the sense of um, giving us a vision for the future, as Charles has just said, but also analyzing why why we are here. Uh, you know, why 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 did this happen? It it, it has to do something with um, with reduced uh, habitat for wildlife, for example, or it could have at least uh, something to to do with that. Um, uh, so I think there's a lot to learn from the sustainability discourse also in terms of analyzing how we came here. And then, uh, as was already said, of course, uh, with regard to where we go in the, in the future, I think we're also realizing that to find solutions to the current situation, if we are talking about finding a vaccine or if we're talking about mitigating the economic impacts, it's only at the international level that we, um, that we, that we can make any, any progress. Thank you. Thank you. Shakuntala, if I may. Uh, so that about the sustainability goal, that's what uh, uh, I will have to wait and see what happens because the science has not been able to give us the answer. It's really uh, unpredictable and uh, so far no one has been able to see the sense science has failed in, a, in a other words so so we'll have to wait and see and okay thank you uh, we i think there are more questions in the chat we will gather those and we will share them uh, with everyone um, there is um, a, a good opportunity to engage in further conversation. As you know, this is a, a series on the futures of higher education, short, medium, and long term. And this is the first uh, seminar se session on uh, sustainable development and the role of education and higher education in particular. And we will have uh, two other such sessions in uh, the Tuesday webinars to come. So we have a last slide that we would like to share with you just with some um, opportunity to, to um, find further information, information that will also be shared with everyone um, separately after this presentation. So while we look for the last slide, let me already thank all the participants for having uh, taken an active part also in the chat and have, for having listened to this uh, very interesting conversation. And certainly let me thank uh, the three esteemed speakers, Shakuntala Laskar, Alexander Leicht and Charles Hopkins for their excellent contributions to the discussion and to debating how to uh, ensure there is a sustainable future for all thanks to uh, better education and thanks to reorienting the kind of education that is being provided at all the different levels, including higher education. So here are some of the links uh, where you can find further information uh, from all, all participants. 
and we uh, would like to say goodbye um, and meet you again on 6 October to discuss leading universities in an age of uncertainty. Then on 13 October, uh, one on the UNESCO Global Convention on the Recognition of Higher Education Qualifications and how to there uh, look at uh, moving towards a global and mobile knowledge economy. On 20 October, we will zoom in on digital dimensions and how um, teaching and learning can be innovated for a better future. And 27 October, higher education under examination, are we ready to train the future healthcare workforce? And to answer uh, to a comment made earlier, is science um, providing the responses that we need? So we look forward to welcoming you back to the webinar series on the Tuesdays to come. Thank you very much for your participation in this webinar. Thank you to everyone. Goodbye.